Mr. Speaker, honorable members of the parliament, dear recipients of the Right Livelihood Award, Excellencies, dear friends. In the very special and unique moment, I traverse the Atlantic Ocean in thoughts and emotions. I am leaving Stockholm for the Southern Hemisphere and embarking on the majestic Amazon, sailing up river to reach one of its major tributaries, the Shingu River. For 45 years, I have journeyed with the people in that region. They are the indigenous people who have lived there for thousands of years. They are the river people who have their homes on the riverbanks. They make their, uh, their living from fishing and small family farming. They are the thousands and thousands of families who have migrated from all the states of Brazil in search of better living conditions during the last decades. decades. They are the people to whom I dedicate my life. They are the people whom I love and I know. And they are the people who love me. The reason for that is simple. 45 years ago in 65, 1965, when I came to Brazil, to Amazonia, to the Xingu, they realized that I did not come in search of wealth and advantages. I came to serve these daughters and sons of God. They are women and men who journey with me. Together, we defend their dignity, human rights, and our environment, our common home on Mother Earth. Ecology, from the Greek oikos, means home. These people know very well that, all, that they will not survive it if Amazonia continues to be disrespected and raised. And they know that planet Earth will suffer irreversible consequences by this cruel destruction. This will be the true apocalypse. It is a fact that those who are against the unscrupulous destructions of environment, against those who have not the slightest respect for the human being, against those who seek immediate and incredible profits, who oppose their ambit uh, amb ambitions to many politicians and entrepreneurs put their, life at, their lives at risk. Slander, defamation, and death threats are the weapons to frighten and silence those who raise their voices against the aggressions to human dignity. This is one of the reasons why the public security authorities decided to put me under the protection of military pol police of the state of Pará uh, on June 20, 29th, two, uh, 2006. These authorities considered themselves responsible for the physical integrity of the Bishop of the Shinku. From that day on, on, armed military police accompany me wherever I am and go in my home region around the Shinku. This evening, they have a day off. I accept the Right Livelihood Award in the name of those who fight with me today. On behalf of the indigenous peoples, Amazonian human rights, I accept it also in the name of dozens of people who have given their lives, whose blood, blood has been spilled, and who were brutally assassinated because they opposed the systemized destruction of Amazonia. Among those murdered, I cite two people who worked with me side by side. U.S. American-born Sister Dorothy Meisteng lived 23 years on the Trans-Amazon Highway 
and was murdered uh, there in 2005. I remember my first meeting with her in, six, in 80, 82 very well. She said, I want to work among the poorest of the poor. It was the first time that someone spoke to me this way. And I told her several things to give her an idea about the reality of, at the Shingu. To my amazement, she didn't ask any further questions and started to live in the midst of the poor. From time to time, she returned to Altamira to get contact with representatives uh, of the administration to demand the rights of the farmers and denounce abuses and threats from land robbers and large, large landholders. It didn't take so that, that long for the first threats to appear. The self-called called owners of the lands began to slander and defame her. This difficult, tiring, and most exhausting life, Dorothy lived until that fateful Saturday, February the 12th, 2005, until 7.30 in the morning when she was shot. This crime was programmed in minute details. Those responsible for the death were not those men who were convicted and who are in jail. It was the 15th of February, 2005, when I buried Sister Dorothy. Never in my life have I felt my heart so invaded by so many sentiments. Even today, I can't describe what I really felt at that moment. The second person I want to remember here today is Ademir Alfeo Federici, called Dema. For many years, a new category of conquistators has appeared in Amazonia. They are the notorious land grabbers who usurp public lands. They use paramilitary forces to defend their interests. They are political and financial uh, they use political and financial uh, influence to maintain their ownership of immense uh, areas of land. The families of small farmers are targeted by these so-called proprietors. One of uh, these victim, uh, victims was Dema. He rose up, uh, uh, he rose up against the proprietors. As a community leader, he always defended the rights of the small farmer, farmers and fought for better days for the rural men and women. On August 23rd, 2001, Dema wrote a letter in support of the investigative work the, of the uh, federal police was doing on the land grabbers. Two days later, he was brutally shot in his home in Altamira. He fell down in front of his wife, Maria da Peña. His last words were, Maria, take care of our, our children. Then he passed away. Until today, the investigation of Dema's murder has not been completed. He was killed because he raised his voice, voice against the hydroelectric project of Belo Monte. The Belo Monte project uh, appears to, to, to be a sacrosanct unquestionable, and assumes the air of being a veritable historical subject. Human beings, families, and communities are not longer protagonists of their own history. They were not heard. They were silenced before the project was planned and elaborated in Brasilia, a project that never took into consideration the legitimate rights and preoccupations of the population of the Xingu. All those who are quoting this project are immediately labeled as enemies of progress and against development. It's amazing that we think of, uh, when we think of the size of uh, Amazonia, a little more than half the size of the whole Brazil, that the principal problem has to do with the ownership, the possession and use of land. The majority of the other problems have their roots in this principal problem. 
Rural, uh, rural violence is uh, linked in the concentration of land ownership and the most shameful impunity with which the criminals are honored. They kill and nothing happens. If they are arrested, they will be released the next day. If they are convicted, they are circulating freely on the street on the next day. There is a lack of public policy to encur that encourages the preservation of Amazonia. This gigantic bioma, Amazonia is unique and the biodiversity is exceptional. Nothing in the whole world exists that is comparable on the, to the region, uh, the marvel of God's creation. Brazil is responsible for the largest part of this bioma, Amazonia. Another huge, huge, uh, huge problem is the trafficking of human beings. Youth, young people of both sexes are lured with promises of a better life and ample wages in the exterior. And they are caught in the international network of prostitution. They dream of waging, waging a better life they have dreams for the future, but they are forced to live in the hell of slavery and brutality. Child prostitution in Amazonia is often organized by people from the upper strata of society. They are polit politicians, business people, and merchants. They lure, promise, use, and abuse, and nothing happens to these sexual criminals. Corruption is their language. This award has been given to me because of my commitment on behalf of the indigenous people, their human rights and dignity. I have always found a specific mission in defending these people, who are the survivors of centuries of massacres. In the de decade of the 80s, in the context of the National Constitutional Assembly, we considered it our goal to implement indigenous rights in the federal constitution. It was essential to encourage the indigenous people's own leadership to assume their own protagonist, protagonist action and to write their own story. We started to build an alliance between the indigenous people and organizations of the non-indigenous society. Tonight, I take the opportunity to all the international community's attention, to call all, to call the international community's attention to the, to the pain, despair, and insecurity of the Guarani Kiowa people in South Mato Grosso. The indigenous people are confined in small areas. Their young people see no prospect for the future, and, they, and uh, the suicide rate among them, among them is alarmingly high. Factory owners who use modern slave labor are treated like heroes by the official uh, administration. I am totally worried about the violation against Guarani Kaiowa. The current government is ignoring this cruel genocide in progress before their eyes. But we must not close our eyes to these crimes. Ladies and gentlemen if, uh, of the jury, I gratefully accept the award on behalf of all these women and these men. And there are three persons from Brazil here. I would like to... There are three people from Brazil who are here. I wanted to show you. I would like to, to thank all those who have supported me during the last uh, years and those who have proponed uh, pro my work to the Right uh, Livelihood Award jury. I would like to express my deep gratitude for the Right Livelihood Award. I'm honored with the award at a moment when our struggle on behalf of the indigenous people, dignity and human rights 
are taking on new dimensions and greater importance in the face of the development project, project, projects that threaten Amazonia. Those anti-ecological pro projects of enterprise will have a huge and destructive impact on everyone sitting here in Stockholm this evening, all the people living on the earth. I am honored to accept this award by the Right Livelihood Foundation and uh, as inter international recognition and support for our total commitment to this work. And I promise to continue for a long, as long as God grants my life. Thank you very much and God bless you.